This is your writer, Anthony L. Kelly, right here. Check it out. These are my books. Mac, Jaja, book, Sunshine. And this is my first book published, Saving Miss Carolina. And this is my latest, El Manic. Uh, go check this book out, man. This is a nod at hip hop on its 50th anniversary. This is uh, a nod to one of the illest MCs to ever do it, Nasir Jones. And this is me shedding the light on uh, mental illness. Uh, I'll leave all the, the links in the description box. Salute to everybody who's ever supported me, man. Y'all go support your boy, Anthony L. Kelly. Check. Till next time, I'm out. Real quick, I want to talk about this because we talked about. Well, I just alluded to like the, the weird Illuminati type S meat, right? And uh -oh. our man Isaiah Washington, we've interviewed him before. Shout out to him. He went in today on some things that are going in Hollywood. Now, I know you've seen Matthew Lawrence, the dude that played in uh, Miss Doubtfire back in the day and shit. He said some things uh -huh. about Hollywood. And then Isaiah Washington said this. He said, I'm wondering if I posted about the actor Sam Rockwell being drunk and flicking my dick in a bar when I told him to apologize before I kicked his ass and told the producers, the Russo brothers, that I was going to handle him, he finally apologized and bought me a bottle of scotch. Two nights later, actor George Clooney walks up to me in the same bar and says, I hear you don't like to get your dick flipped, and does the same exact thing knowing I couldn't knock him out. Will the mainstream media write about these allegations in a tweet? Nope. No cease and desist, and just crickets. What they need to do is leave me the hell alone before I really start talking. Oh. I'll wonder. Now, now is that a tweet from his real account? Because hopefully I don't want people coming out and say, oh, that was a robot that did it or he got hacked. <laughs> that was his real account. No, no, no doubt. I'll text him to confirm that shit. That was his real account. <laughs> right. But what, what do you think about that? We've heard these rumors and things about Hollywood. Now we're seeing more men come out and talk against some of the things that they have to experience as far as that weird type sexual behavior when it comes to Hollywood. So do you think there's a correlation when we see things like the Met Gala? I'm not going to associate the Met Gala. Right. But it's with things like that and what we hear in Hollywood, do you think it all is true, man? Yeah, I do. And, and I'm, I'm against any type of predatorial sexual behavior, sexual behavior, whether it's, uh, you know, a guy going after a woman does not want it or a man going after a man does not want it. I'm against all of that. All of it to me is that, you know, the essay, in my opinion, if you go up to a woman and smack her in the booty or if a dude is Terry Crew and you're grabbing your nutsack, mm. you know what I mean? Um, I don't know what guy's going to stand around there not do anything but i get it maybe you know it's an atmosphere where he's just not and i'm not even saying you being emotional that's right, a natural right. reaction right you grab my shit i'm swinging on you exactly you know what i mean especially if 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 you're a guy that's right. just like come on we don't we don't play like that a woman it's a little different i'm not gonna sound like i'm like busting rhymes you know what i mean <laughs> you know what i mean but <laughs> yeah so that that's just but for years before we were born it's been allegations coming out of hollywood like this you know, and um, I, I just think, honestly, man, a lot of people say, right, that the whole H thing, a lot of it is predatorial. Mm. And I've heard that, you know what I mean? Men on men, women on women. A lot of it is like kind of grooming people and going after people that's not really into it, but trying to kind of turn them out. I hear that a lot. I know you hear it, too. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? So I don't know if this is something that has to do with that. But I believe him 100%. I don't see why he would make this up, man, at all. I think you brought up Terry Crews. And I think a lot of the reason why we clown Terry Crews is because a man's natural reaction is to knock that dude 10 yards through the fucking air, pick him up and knock him 50 yards in the air forever trying to violate you as a man in front of your wife. And the fact that he almost allowed it to go down, and we don't know the circumstances, what type of money was involved with that nut grab or whatever the case may be, but it's like, okay, X all that. You can't do that. And... How many people are allowing this to go down simply to hold a career and keep a career? You a know, lot. Yeah. A lot of people, you know, I mean, they just attribute it to acting. And I believe that some actors really can find a role and go into places that they don't typically go into in a normal human life. But I also believe that there's a little bit of an agenda to that too, where they specifically want you to do certain things in order to gain more success. And I think that it's more than color at this point. You're seeing more than just black people, more than just Hispanic people come out and say these things. I just think that the punishment may be a little harsher for us oh, when yeah. it comes to the ramifications of us not doing it. Yep. This is why we see a lot more of our brothers wearing dresses than we see the white counterparts. Not to say that they don't do it, because they do, Yeah. but it seems like it's a lot more when it comes to the rise of superstardom with our counterparts. We've seen... Um, our man Miguel Nunez talk about doing Joanna Man 2. Oh, yeah. Who the fuck wants to see that? <laughs>
didn't want to see Juana Man 1. Why can't we see a pretty Ricky Fontaine part 2 or some shit? Why we got to see Juana Man 2? I, I don't know, man. I think it's something to that. <laughs> Obviously, they give a nice bag for men to emasculate themselves. And uh, it's something to it. Something hey, remember, to it. I remember I was telling you, I was watching Ladybugs the other yeah, day. Yeah. And I remember when we was little, it came out like 92. We used to watch this all the time. All the time. Back then, I, I didn't really, we didn't really think about the ramifications of that. They put that little boy in a dress. Yep. Back then, now I seen the other day, I'm like, yo, why the hell is this little boy in a dress? Mm -hmm. And it may be comedy, it may be funny, I understand that. But it's like, it got to be something behind it. Like you said, it's not just race specific, you know what I mean? But for us, it seems like, and, and you know, as much black actors as I can name that wore a dress, you could probably give me the same amount that didn't. Because yep. there's so many black actors, I get it. But it's just like, when you got, we did a lot of interviews with actors, and we probably asked Maybe twenty or thirty of them. I'll say ten or fifteen to be to be real and to be modest about the dress thing. We should probably could put something together on that. Yeah, you we probably, right, probably more like twenty to thirty. Maybe, yeah. If you really go back, and yeah. it's like we asked them about it, and we got all different answers about that whole different you know spectrum. So it's crazy, man. And um, you know, I just don't see why that would have to be a part of you know your catalog putting the dress on. There's so much other things that could be funny. That can make people laugh by, in my opinion, emasculating you, putting you in a dress. Because that's what I think it is. Yeah. I think it emasculates you even further, you know, to put a black man in a dress. Especially because all the, it's like the image. Image is so important, man. Yeah. We, we, don't, we don't realize how important the image is, not only in our community, but how we perceive by other people. Right. And if we keep saying, you know, every black male getting destroyed in the media by different allegations, wearing dresses. It's almost like you ain't no man no more. Right. It's like they, they promote you to be a sissy mm. or, or a clown or a comedian, as we see. Mm -hmm. Those are the people that seem to ascend more, the people that are clowners, the comedian guys, the guys that want to wear wigs, the guys that want to wear dresses. It just seems like that. And it seems like that real black masculinity, masculinity is not really promoted like that. That's what it seems like. 100% facts. And the thing is crazy is like nobody's questioning what you want to do with yourself sexually behind closed doors. Absolutely. It's a predatorial element involved in this that they're trying to turn out heterosexual men that clearly want to just deal with women. Don't have nothing against what you want to do, mm -hmm. but you want to turn out heterosexual people. That's the weird predatorial piece that I just don't understand. If you want to go, if you Hollywood and you happen to be homosexual and you want to sleep with other homosexual people that follow that lifestyle, do you? Right. But you got people that don't even deal with that and just because you got some weird sexual fantasy about the thing, you're going to try to turn them out and use your power to as a piece to influence that and take away something out of their pocket. It's 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 sick. Yeah. But it's reality. Yeah. No it different is. than a guy. It is kind of different though than a guy, I would say. What do you mean? You know what I mean? When you're talking about like the H word, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Trying to turn a guy out yeah. as opposed to a, a, a man trying to get at a woman. I think it's a little bit different. Yeah, it is. Because, you know, you make babies and stuff with women. Men and women make babies. Right. That's just the way it is. The other thing is just like, whoa. Like you're trying to turn someone out to a totally different way of life. And it's like, that's it's, it happens in a bedroom. Keep it in the bedroom. Yeah. We didn't got to know about it. Do what you do in the bedroom. Keep behind closed doors. You want to do what you think? I don't have no hate, no bias against you. And when you start trying to force on other people or turn this person out, turn this person out with it, to me, it comes to a point where it's like, okay, this is getting scary. Oh, God, what would the conversation be like if us as two heterosexual men seen two homosexual females that we were attracted to and said, you know what? We're going to fuck y'all straight again. What would the conversation be like if we as heterosexual men said we were going to turn homosexuals back into heterosexuals. Right. They would fry us yeah. at the state. But this happens all the time in Hollywood on the opposite end. But this is what's being promoted. This is being highlighted. This is what be, is, is being pushed into the forefront for whatever reason. Because I don't know why sexuality is being pushed toward any forefront. That's a private situation between you and that person. Spooky, bro. Yeah. And you got to be able to have these conversations, I think. And not be scared of these type of conversations, man. And um, you just got to be able to have them as men. Period. And women yeah. out there. Absolutely. Well, another conversation I think we need to have is um, Vic Mensa. Vic Mensa did an interview with Spin Magazine where he talked about, you know, the police. And he said the police are not our biggest issue. They may be a definitive factor. And if you live or die today. 
but you're going to deal with much more run-of-the-mill violence from your own kind. He added, because that's just the psyche and programming of our communities. So it's like, as a young black man, must learn to become the aggressor unless you want to be the victim. What's your thoughts? I agree. Yeah. A hundred percent. Now, although the media may give us an image that every police officer wants to kill every black man in the world, that's just not the case. And when you look at how many rappers have we talked about, unfortunately, passing away due to violence in the last four years, five years we've done this platform, how many died at the hands of the police? And then how many died at the hands of somebody that looks exactly like them? Nine times out of ten in the neighborhood they grew up in. Mm Mm-hmm. That's just the reality and the fact. And we talk about it when it relates to this podcast. Somebody of a different hue as us can go and ask incriminating questions and nothing will happen. We go and ask the same questions and we got to watch our back when we walk out that door. Because there's a self-hate yeah. piece of poison that's implemented within us that was strategically planned. And we can go into that and get into depth how throughout the decades and centuries that was kind of put in place. But it's right. And... You could call Vic Mensa what you want. You could say what you want. Or you capping for the po- look at the facts. Mm-hmm. And the facts are, well, he's from in Chicago. More black and brown people die from black and brown people than they do from the hands of the police, unfortunately. It just right. is what it is. And we don't hear about it in the mainstream media because the plan is going in motion perf- perfectly. One dies. One goes to jail. We get free labor out of one. One goes in the dirt. We're winning. One for one. So... Yeah. I mean, I agree, and I, I appreciate Vic Mensa for speaking out. He usually does speak out against things that are against status quo and does cause kind of a, a, a controversial type conversation. But in this aspect, he's 100% right, in my opinion. Yeah, even the part where he says you got to become the aggressor unless you want to be the victim. Mm-hmm. I think this is like, you know, hundreds of years of, I, ain't, I don't know if I want to use the word programming, mm-hmm. but just, you know, hundreds of years of a way of life being a certain way and having to adjust and adapt to a certain way. My thing will be also is to just keep in mind, yeah, he's true. It's 100%. Statistically, he's 100% right. But that don't mean, and not that we saying this, to disregard, you know, the police nope. and our relationship with the police. Right. And, you know, the institution that the police was, um, you know, birthed out of, which is slave catchers, mm-hmm. you know. So you, you got to, as a black man, you got many enemies. You got many, you know what I mean? And um, unfortunately... The black man is, is probably going to be one of your biggest, you know, and that's sad. That's just the way it is right now, man. Um, you're most more likely to be killed by another black man than anybody else. Mm-hmm. That's just the statistic. We got to work day by day to try to change that, you know. So, yeah, I agree with him, man. It's not much more you can really, you know, you can't argue it. All you could do is agree with it and add to it, you know. But with that being said, don't think the police is your friend either. It's a certain way you got to engage them in a certain way. That you have to, you know, uh, move around police as well. Facts. And there's yeah. probably going to be people in the comments to go, well, what about white on white? What about Asian on Asian? It happens everywhere. It depends on your demographic. You're 100% right, but we are black. Yeah. You got to yeah. talk about us. Yeah. And how to fix us. Because right. when you talk about all these other cultures, when it comes economically, when it comes to the power structure, when it comes to education, we sit at the lowest end of that totem pole. And we got to figure out how we can fix that. And we got all these talented men and women in our culture that are dying in the streets or going to jail because of circumstances that we have to fix. It has to be talked about. It has to be highlighted. And we're not alienating just us. We're us. So we got to talk about how to fix us. Yeah, we don't, you know, we don't, the thing is, like, we don't have to remain in this condition anymore. Right. Because technically, we're free. I know people say you go to jail, this, that, and the third. It's, uh, to me, it's about the spending, the spending how we spend our money. Mm-hmm. We could be di- any, anywhere anybody else could be. Yep. We just don't do it the right way. We don't live with each other. We don't keep our money in our community. We spend it frivolously. We spend it on things, you know, and we all do it. I do it too. You know what I mean? Something that's going to make you happy for the moment. You know what I mean? You get a sense of gratitude, and after that, you're feeling depressed that you bought it. You know what I mean? That, that's the, it's, it's, it's going to take, you know, it took a, hundreds of years to get us in a position. It's going to take a hundred, hundreds of years, I think, to get us out of this. 